My name's Mike Rowe, and this is my job. I explore the country looking for people who aren't afraid to get dirty. Uh, <laughs> that was a goose, I swear to God. Hardworking men and women who earn an honest living. Okay, bounce tested. Whoa! <laughs> doing the kinds of jobs that make civilized life possible for the rest of us. Now, get ready. To get dirty. Whoa! Coming up on Dirty Jobs. Hang on. When you shake the tree at Fedora Farms, you know just what kind of nut will fall out. Walnuts. We're going to shake them, we're going to sweep them, we're going to pick them up. This nut house is run by a perfectly sane family. But getting the product from the grove to your table, well, that's a crazy dirty job. It smell good yet? No, it doesn't. It doesn't smell good. And if you don't believe it, well, nuts to you. I used to like walnuts. Now, not so much. And later, these are dead geese, dead ducks, little balls. The guys drop their birds off. She processes the birds. Dead birds go to the Mallard Duck and Goose Processing Company. And with the help of Trudy and her grandsons, out comes meat and down pillows. This is how it works. We're still hunting, bringing, dressing, gathering, preparing, clocking. The only way to describe the process is foul. <laughs> oh, God. Well, it's a beautiful day here in Meridian, California, specifically at Fedora Farms, and a fine opportunity for me to tell you everything I know about walnuts. Ready? They're hard to open, and they grow on trees. And this is one. Anything else is going to have to come from an expert. Fortunately, Brian Fedora is an expert. You are an expert at this, right? Certainly. certainly. Good. Uh, you're one of the Fedoras, of course, of Fedora Farms, which has been around for forever. Since early late 1800s. Wow. What's this thing right here? This is a shaker, a walnut shaker. It shakes the, the walnuts off the tree. Mm -hmm. uh, when the walnuts are on the tree, they're encapsulated in a walnut hull, uh, which we're going to bring those off the tree and get them on the ground so we can pick them up and get them into the huller and dryer. So that's a hull? That's the green outer hull. You don't care if I open this up? No. If I, you didn't care if I pulled it off, you won't care if I open it? Not at all. We're going to get them on the ground anyways. <laughs> all right. So this machine shakes these trees. These fall to the ground. That's correct. We're going to shake them. We're going to sweep them. We're going to pick them up. We're going to load them in a truck. They're going to go in the huller and dryer. They'll get loaded in another truck. And then they'll go into a, a sheller, get shelled, and go on from there. In market, we eat them. Or you just cut out all the middle things, you just pick them off the ground and shove them in your mouth. That's one of the best. Over 70% of walnuts traded in the global marketplace are produced in California. And this is how you get them off a tree. We'll clamp the tree. Yeah. Once it's clamped, we shake. Can I give it a try? I'd love you to give it a try. These brushes are just to get the nuts out of the way of the tires. That's correct. We don't want to run them over. Walnut oil is used for cooking, cosmetics, and even in fine art paint. In fact, the paint used to create the Mona Lisa contains walnut oil. Oop. I am not much of an artist with this thing, however. Tricky business. Hang on, folks. Hang on. In ancient Rome, walnuts were considered a food of the gods. Hey, let's shake Barsky. Romans threw them to wedding guests for good luck. Let's see if Barsky feels lucky. Remarkable. Brian tells me that walnuts are the only nuts that contain a significant amount of heart-healthy omega-3 fatty acids. Now that we've scattered walnuts and debris all over the grove, Brian has another machine to start organizing this mess. What's its official name? This is called a sweeper. Just a sweeper. The nuts that we shook on the trees, we're now going to put them into a row uh -huh. so we can pick them up and put them in the trailers and haul them into uh, the huller. This little 12 horsepower beast was built back in 1972. Getting a bit cranky, a little loud. There are newer sweepers out there with cabs and air conditioning, but there's something about a convertible. The breeze in your hair, the dirt in your face.
Nice job, Mike. It's not a, uh, a you know, physically punishing job initially, but what was it on there, 45 minutes? Maybe? Something like that. What's the average shift on this demon? 10 hours. I can't even, I'm lip reading right now. It'll make, <laughs> it'll make you a bitter man. If you, if you said bitter, I'm with you. It's dusty. Dusty jobs. This high-tech harvester does far more than just pick up nuts. It scoops up the rows we've made with the sweeper, and the fan sucks out all the leaves. Dirt falls out through the bottom. Sticks get carried over and dropped off the back. And the walnuts are dropped into the conveyor cart. So it took me how long to do one row of shaking and uh, lining up and gathering? Shaking, sweeping, and picking. About four hours. Four hours a row. And you've got like what? A couple million rows here? A couple hundred. Good job, security, Mike. Just come straight out, make a wide turn. It sounded so simple. I just go to a walnut farm, pick up some nuts. So far, I've shaken them, swept them, sucked them up, and now apparently we're sending them on a trip. miles down the road is the Fedora Farm shop. Here we encounter a giant machine called a huller. It's designed to remove tons of gunk from tons of nuts. Let me sum this up as simply as I can. The nuts arrive from the field in three basic stages. You've got your walnut still in the hull, you've got your walnut which is relatively clean, and you have your more common walnut which is dirty. All of them go through the trash berator first. Inside the trash berator is a cyclone of air, and that sucks all the debris away from the nuts, making them cleaner than they were, but not entirely clean. At this point, you can see some dirty nuts out of their hull on their way for a bath. All of the nuts, those relatively clean, those hopelessly dirty, and those still inside their hull are bathed at this point. There they come to the dehuller, or the hulling machine, and that's where this green thing is removed once and for all. Now all of the nuts are clean, but there's one final determination to be made, and that determination is as follows. Good nuts are separated from bad nuts in the aspirator. Inside of a good nut, as you might imagine, is nothing but good, nutritious, healthy, nut meat. Inside of a bad nut, that's a whole different story. Here you see meat that is shriveled and disappointing. I can't prove it, but I'm relatively sure that no one wants to put shriveled, disappointing nut meat into their mouth. Any questions? Coming up, is your pit overflowing, jammed? It's just full. There's a place here called the pit. As it starts to break down, it's gonna start molding rotten. Nothing that's called the pit is ever clean. It look like walnuts to you. And later, Fella could cut himself on here, he's not oh, yeah. paying attention. Without a doubt. If you don't know what you're doing, and excuses won't fly, just wing it. Still got, still got all your fingers working this over the years? We it's... don't talk about it while you're on the saw. You're right, that's good advice. When the walnuts are de-hulled and washed, the dirt and debris that used to be on them has to go somewhere. And that somewhere will have to be cleaned up as well. But before the nuts can go up a conveyor and through the hauler, they have to go down into what's called the pit. Sounds like a place where we could see a real dirty side of walnuts. So from the field, the nuts gone back to the uh, to the pit, I'm told. And I guess this would be a, you'd be Chris. I'm Chris. Brothers and some guards. Is your pit overflowing, jammed, broken, or is it working the way it's supposed to? It's working the way it is. It's just full, constantly feeding the machine. Sure. Um, but we're shut down and ready to uh, start cleaning up. So they, all the nuts go in here and then, what, into your factory or, or whatever this uh, place is? They go up and into the machine that actually removes all the dirt and debris right. that you guys couldn't get out in the field. Gotcha. That's good. We're going down to the pit if you want to join us. That's nice. All right, so you got this on now. What's the job exactly? All this stuff down here. It's the leave-ins from the walnuts, falls on the ground, and we got to get it out. So is this stuff going in, or just the stuff that's on the ground? Just the stuff on the ground. Well, and the back. What's in the back? Oh, yeah. Sure, little maggots, organic matter. It smells like it's fermenting. As it starts to break down, it's going to start molding rotten. Uh, OK. OK. 
Consumers bought an estimated 2.7 million pounds of walnuts for last year's Pro Football Championship. I'm sure none of them thought of some poor schlub shoveling gunk just so they could have their munchies. It smell good yet? No, it doesn't. It doesn't smell good. You sure it's not toxic? I don't know. Just, what am I eating? Whatever they are, they're flying down my throat. They look like walnuts to you? I used to like walnuts. Now, not so much. You'll tell me when we're done, right? We're done. You have to ask. Now what? Now what's that little thing? That's cute. This is what you need on the next job. We're going to the black hole. The black hole. Sounds like a dirty, dangerous place. Fortunately, I'm armed with an odd miniature hoe. This way? No. No. What's on the other side? Black hole. Sure. Sure. What does this machine do? This is what takes out all the loose debris that's lighter than the weight of a good nut. So, so anything that's leaves, right. grass, little sticks, the dried up hole that's loose. Very small rocks. It's like a big vacuum. OK, how does one get in? Really? Ow. Ah. Ow. This better not be a made up job, man. People really get in here? Ah. Ah. Now you're moving. Ah. <laughs> There's nowhere to stand, man. All right, give me a flat little hoe. That's why it's small. From fermented gunk to this dry, crusty crud, these little nuts create a lot of dirt. There you go, now you can just kind of lean on back. Yeah, it's a, it's a good picnic now. Do these need to be razor sharp like that? That looks pretty good. Yeah, thanks. I think you're done. Coming up. You got to reach your hand up in there and make sure that there's nothing plugging it. Sometimes you feel like a nut. After a day working at a walnut farm, you don't. Don't forget the other side. And later. Feels very different without the stuff on yeah. it, I gotta tell you. Like a raw chicken. This job doesn't ruffle your feathers. No! You must be unflappable. He lost his head. This is the float tank. The float tank, so walnuts, float. walnuts float. All right. Rocks, mud, dirt clods, poo. Sprinkler heads, wrenches, don't. Actually, poo can float. OK, I'll give you that. Trust me. So how do we clean this? Uh, there's two valves at the bottom. And we got to open those up. OK. And then we're going to wash it out. Oh, crap. You know what? Why don't I have boots on? Dirty walnut bath water. How refreshing. This water will be reclaimed and used to irrigate the walnut groves at Fedora Farms. While you're there, you got to reach your hand up in there and make sure that there's nothing plugging it. And I'm looking for clogs. Well, That's anything metal that could cut the belt. It's not metal. That's not metal. That's not metal. If you don't feel anything there, don't forget the other side. That's a walnut hole. That's a hole. These are, of course, nuts. That's a hole. It's a 
come on up and we got a big hose here that you can uh, rinse the rest of it out with. Good enough? Good enough. We're getting down to the clean stuff now. <sighs> Is there anything on my pants? These were brand new too. First day I wore them. After washing and sorting, the nuts are sent below to the dryers. The bins are heated from below while the nuts dry on the top. I'm here to meet the patriarch of the family, Sib Fedora. You must be the big cheese. You must be. How you doing, Sib, right? Good. Mike. Mike, those, uh, spent the day with your boys. It's quite a pair you got there. <laughs> quite a pair. Understatement. What are you doing and where am I? Okay, this is in the middle of our uh, bulk dryer. <clears throat> We're preparing to ship these out. Just check the moisture on them. They're good to go. They've got to be 8% or, or less for the handler to take them. Why? Because of mold and mildew issues. If they're too moist, they can't store them until they get them shelled and, and processed or bagged in the, the manner they want them in. Right. So how do we go about the business then of, of loading the truck? What we're going to do is we're going to crank this door open just enough to fill this uh, conveyor. How many of these will you do? How many of these bins? For their truckload, eight bins. Eight bins, OK. Just a momentarily, you're going to hear it going in the, in the truck. It's like a waterfall. This process is going to take about 30 minutes to fill 25 times. Got it. I think it's good for you. Perfect food. Absolutely the perfect food. The Omega 3, and it, if you eat an ounce a day, instead of a shot a day, eat an ounce of walls a day. Yeah. Perfect for your body. Oh, it's just funny because as good as these are for your for your heart and your and your circulatory system, it seems like everything in your whole place, you gotta crawl into a little hole and knock the flack away. That's why you need to be healthy and eat walnuts. <laughs> Anything else I can clean up for you while this is happening? <laughs> you want to wash my pickup? <laughs> well, that's my day at the Fedora Walnut Farm. I know a whole lot more about walnuts at the end of the day than I did at the beginning, but this much will stay with me forever. If you spend enough time cleaning nuts, you'll start to feel kind of dirty. Fortunately, I'll wash off. Coming up. Now give me the wing when yeah. you finish, please. Yes, ma'am. When they say nothing goes to waste in a place like this, they really mean it. It looks like an owl. Keeps the birds from pooping on your new car. I'm tired of them pooping on my car. Everything you say should be on a t-shirt, woman. And later. How long back here? As long as I can three. remember. Three. Everybody starts here like when they're three years old. Well, until the government changed it. Reminiscing about what were the good old days for some people. And then the government changed it. You couldn't hit them with a dead duck and discipline them. What's it like to be struck with it? I mean, it's all around wrong. This pillow is 100% genuine goose down. This genuine goose is 100% dead. The process by which this is transformed into this goes on in that building behind me. No, I'm not gonna tell you it's a dirty job. I'm gonna show you. Okay, you've got two rushes ahead of you, Alan. Another guide with 50 birds. This is a busy time of year in Tule Lake, California. It's waterfowl hunting season, and the nearby wildlife refuge is teeming with ducks, geese, and shotgun-toting hunters. As a function of waterfowl management, the licensed hunting of ducks and geese during the six-week season is allowed until 1 p.m. The license fees help manage to maintain the refuge. Okay, take those with you. The birds are primarily hunted for food. I'll take these up. But their feathers have been used for centuries as stuffing for pillows and quilts. Here's 43. Almost every part of the bird is utilized. These go with you. You have four white friends back there? Thank you for being patient. We got one duck and a total of 10 geese. Yeah, it looks like most any other store on the block, but it's different. It's full of fluffy things and, uh, well, uh, dead things. 
Was that in my truck? It was, Phil, uh, right? Yes. All right, Mike, how are you? And you must be Trudy? Yes, I'm glad to meet you. It's nice to meet you. These are dead, uh, dead geese, dead ducks, little both? Little both. All right, so you bring Trudy uh, dead things, and she turns them into fluffy things. Uh, she turns them into fluffy things, and when we get to the meat, she processes the birds, so they're, it's just like bringing home a store-bought bird. Okay. I keep their feathers and sell them a pillow. All right, so what's the official name of your place here, Trudy? The Mallard Duck and Goose Processing Company. When you say down versus feathers, you're pulling the down off now? I'm pulling the feathers off, Those the, are the top feathers? layer. Where's the down exactly? That's where we're going. Oh, yeah, that's nice. How long have you been doing this? Forty years. <laughs> Forty long years. Right here, right behind this counter, doing this thing? Before, I worked at the University of California as a plant breeder. But this has been the best thing that ever happened to me. Really? You get to meet all kinds of people. People like Phil. Phil's my buddy. <laughs> now, do you, I mean, are you hunting for fun? You take tours? With Actually, your... I'm one of the guides here on Tule Lake and Lower Klamath Refuges. Guys come in, drop uh -huh. their birds off. They come back the next day, and everything's done for them. Let me ask you. So, so things are busy, right? I mean, calls are coming in. All that. Let's listen yeah. to this. Mallard. Calls coming okay. in from literally all over the block. Birds coming in? Eleven that's my, uh, geese and 12 ducks. Oh, that's a good shirt. That's my business rush. partner. He's uh, okay. on a rush. Oh, today. Great. On a rush. Always on a rush. That means chop, chop. Chop, chop. No, I get it. I get it. Oh, dear. So this is Toby. Mike. Nice to meet you. How are you? I'm okay, thanks. Trudy, what's he doing? Uh, winging and pulling off the feathers over four inches. State of California doesn't want it in their bedding. That's winging, huh? That's winging. So these birds are uh, these birds are grounded. Yep. Because if you leave the wings on and you put them on the picker, the bird will come back and slap you in the face. I wouldn't blame it. What's your uh, what's your job here officially? Um, I do everything pretty much. Yeah. Wing, pick, gut, do it all. Wing, pick, and gut. And you've been working with or for Trudy now for a while? Yeah, uh, I've been in here ever since I was three years old. No kidding. Yeah. How long has that been? Well, 22 now. No kidding. All right, so you know what you're doing. Toby is Trudy's grandson. Show me what you do. All right, grab a bird out of the basket, pull the wing all the way out, slide it into the gap, pull it down, get the wing off. Pull the feathers bigger than four inches out. Uh-huh. Feathers over four inches are too hard to clean, according to California law. Any bird's been winged. You mind if I do one of these? Yeah, go ahead. Just grab a hole over there, slide it in the hole, and pull it down. Right. There's Good. the wing cut off. Interesting. All right. Felt like he cut himself on here. He's not oh, yeah. paying attention. Without a doubt. Any near uh, misses for you? Not that I know of. No. What about you, Trudy? What? Still got, you still got all your fingers working this over the years? Everything's... We don't talk about it while you're on the saw. Okay, good. You're right. That's, that's good advice. Concentrate. What happened to this guy, aside from the fact he got shot? Canada goose. Oh, the big one. Yeah. How much would you say this weighs? Probably about eight and three quarter to nine pounds. All right. Um, do you charge the same to process a bird of this size as nope. you do? No? This is uh, $9 to pick and process this bird. Pick process, all right. P and P, we call it. Do you call it that? No. Well, there you go. You could, though. Get You'll understand it after you do him. <laughs> Everything you say should be on a t-shirt, woman. So we'll swing him over here. Now give me the wing. Will yeah. you finish, please? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, what some Thule Lakers do, we fold this back, we put a string through it, and hang it in our trees because it looks like an owl. And it keeps the birds from pooping on your new car. Is that true? It works. So you say this as a woman who's clearly owned a new car that's been pooped on. I'm tired of them pooping on my car. Something else for the t-shirt. Coming up. This is the goose room. It's okay to walk on it? Yes, yeah. it's fun. Though it's indoors, with no windows, this room's a winter wonderland all year round. And when you throw it up, it's like snow. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> Hanging off your hat. And later. Just reach on inside. Can I pull the intestines out first? Yeah, if you want. Well, I'd like to. Yeah. I see what goes through a goose. That's a gizzard I've been uh, waiting for. And this is full of little rocks and stuff. Yeah. You want to cut it open? While it's still in the goose. Here's everything that's been eaten. Feel in here, through the pebbles. How cool is that? It's like dirt almost. Amazing. After we removed the bird's wings, it was on to relieving them of their feathers. We were given a hand by Justin, another of Trudy's grandsons. 
So what am I looking at? Goose picker. Is it rubber? Yeah. So you just put the geese under there and it just, it just pulls the feathers off? Yeah. You might have to show me one of those. All right. Looks like a lot of feathers back there. A lot. Okay. Well, that is way more efficient than I imagined. Yeah, you can pick one in two minutes. Maybe three. Wow. How long did it take in the good old days before this? Forever. In the good old days, they pulled the feathers out by hand. I'm real fussy about the booty, so very where the feathers in. You're fussy about a lot of things. Well, I don't like them fuzzy when they come to the gutter. This is the accepted method of doing it everywhere, wherever it's done? Wherever it's done, there's so few left. There you go, Mike. And that's, that's a goose with no feathers. Oh. See? See the booties are all clean? The booties? This, that's that area? Right here. The bottom of the lake. All clean. Ah. All right. Good. It feels very different without the stuff on yeah. it. Yeah. Like a raw chicken. Yeah. You know, flip him around and grab his head by the beak. By the beak? Yep. Throw the butt in that way. And then just... You okay, Mike? <laughs> Did ya? Oh, it's okay. This is scared the hell out of me. I thought it came back to life. <laughs> but it flew, it came all the way around yeah, top. Yeah, 360 on you. That dialed, all right. That got my attention. That got my attention. Well, <laughs> <laughs> what'd you get? Well, you really <laughs> cleaned it up. I'm sorry, man. I tore its head <laughs> Sorry, man. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. He lost his head. Yeah. I'm sorry. Trudy, show me another one from start to finish, the way you do. OK. I've got a good grip on his tail and his legs. This goes here. You go in, out, and up, and rotate. And bump. And in and out and up. In, out, and up. Did you hear that? Yeah, I didn't want to, but I did. Did you hear your grandmother yes. talking in sexual <laughs> metaphors? Yes, I did. Foul. <laughs> that machine's mean. I'll say. So, how long back here with Grandma doing this? As long as I can three. remember. Three. Since she was three? Yeah. Uh huh. Just like uh, the Toby? Yeah. Everybody starts here like when they're three years old? Yeah. Well, until the government changed it. What'd the government do? It passed a law that you had to be 14. No more child labor laws. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem with our government. Yeah. They're not letting three-year-olds the, pull their weight. And then the government changed it. You couldn't hit them with a dead duck and discipline them. You've been struck with a dead duck by... by I, I have. Be, I've hit them with Many dead times. ducks. What's it like to be struck with a duck? I mean, is it just a... It's all around wrong. That's a, that's a goose. That's that heavy one. Greasy, greasy goose. Where to? Down there. Down Good. here? Yep, now we're gonna go to the trimming table. Go on to the trimming table. This area? Yep, this will do right here. Okay, where exactly are all the feathers going? They go in a big giant room in the back? Yeah, we'll take you on back in there. Show you where they go. You know, I think I'd like to do that before I do whatever I'm gonna do here. All right. Can, well, you, can you show? Is yeah, it... it's right through here. Follow me. You'll come too, Trudy? Right. All right, you follow right him. I'll follow you. You follow me. These are all raw feathers. The last few years crop. Oh, okay. This is the goose room. It's okay to walk on it? Yes. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah, I guess there's a certain funness to it. So this is, I mean, this is like the best insulation on the planet, right? Right. I mean, the best natural insulation, anyway. Or is it even better than unnatural insulation? And when you throw it up, it's like snow. Sure is. Hanging off your hat. So this is all, that's all down. It's all down. The down dries in this room for a year before it's bagged. All right, now I got it in my mind's eye. Now I understand. Now we can pull the guts out of that big goose. Right. 
All right. What do you do with this guy? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and grab a knife. And then you're going to start by taking the feathers off from around the wings. Don't stab yourself in the eye. Once again, t-shirt material. Yeah. Things I've learned from Trudy. There's two tubes in the neck that we got to cut towards the head. Right there. And just slice that now. <laughs> Feels like it goes all the way to the that other end of it. membrane's hard to get past. Something else for the t-shirt. There you go. There, there. it is. Mm -hmm. That's done. And find the breastbone up top. Make a slice from those two bones all the way to that. Oh, dear. Now she's ready to gut. Ready to gut. I just want to pause for a second and say that, you know, this business of knowing where our food comes from is, is kind of important. I mean, it's got to be important to you. I mean, yeah. this, is, this is what you're devoting your life to. I mean, people need to know, right, that this is, this is how it works. We're That's still hunting, bringing, dressing, gathering, preparing, plucking, etc. Yes, sir. No reason to feel bad about any of this, right? Nope. No. This is going to be eaten, this bird. Nothing's going to go to waste on it. Well, some might. Yeah. There are a few things in here that might be that. wasted. Yeah, you do. Just reach on inside. Can I pull the intestines out first? Yeah, if you want. Well, I'd like to. You'll find a big fat gizzard. Nope, no gizzard. I don't think this goose had a heart. <sighs> I feel if I think I, I might, I may have, I may have the heart. Pull it on out. Let's see. Wow. There's the heart. Where's the gizzard? It's this in is, there. This, this is one of the mysteries of the modern world. What's this thing? That's a gizzard I've been uh, waiting for. Oh. <laughs> well, this is, well, that's a gizzard, huh? What exactly is the gizzard in layman's yeah. terms? It's where uh, the food gets stored, uh -huh. and they pick up little pebbles because they don't have anything to, to grind it up and to digest it, so they use the pebbles to grind it up and digest it. So instead of a stomach, the goose has a gizzard, and this is full of little rocks and stuff? Yeah. You want to cut it open? You kidding me? They're tough. So much, Rudy. So much. I'm happy for you. <laughs> okay. All right. What are we looking at, Doctor? All right. So, here's everything that's been eaten. You Green. feel in here? See the pebbles? The little tiny rocks? Yeah. Stuff in there? That's right. what it's using to grind it up. Oh, look at this. How cool is that? It's like dirt, almost. Sand. It's a fine sand. Okay. Amazing. Now all we got to do is rinse her off. She's cleaned out. Rub him good. Polish the bird. T-shirt. See? That's what I'm talking about. Polish the bird. I might cheat a little bit. I push from this side, too. T-shirt. When you can't pull it, cut it. T-shirt. The male drake, the plumage is gorgeous. Once you get him undressed, he looks like this. T-shirt. They're hard to control when they're slippery. Now try it. T-shirt. Coming up. How do you know when the thing's full? Instinct. Mine or yours? Whoever speaks first. <laughs> If pillows could talk, these would probably go quack. Oh, my God. We went crazy, didn't we? You want to make two? We overstuffed it. <laughs>I mean, this is not the image I want to leave with. I want to go back to the fluffy, nice, soft uh, pillows you do. Just oh, jam it on. I want to make a pillow. The walk to the other side of the building gives one time to psychologically make the transition from waterfowl cleaner to pillow stuffer. This is the uh, this is the headquarters for the actual pillow stuffing. The pillow company is 30 years old. Mm -hmm. Now, you're going to make a pillow. Mm -hmm. You get to choose which color you would like. Well, let's see. Neutral is the safe way to go. Blue, of course, is the traditional. All men like blue. Pink is the choice that a man would make who is so secure in his masculinity, he doesn't much care about the opinions of others. Really? Yeah, I'll take the blue. No, no, I want pink. Okay, that gets clamped down. Mm -hmm. This one is for arthritic hands. That's just to reinsure that it doesn't go blowing off. Well, I see you've really put that on there with a certain uh, clarity that defies <laughs> Reset it. Mm -hmm. Okay, for the arthritic hands. It's here. That squeeze. Good. You can't let big wads jam here. It'll jam the machinery. You have to let an air flow. You have to look for this kind of stuff. Feathers. Well, this one's that rigid one I told you about. We don't want it in there. <laughs> T-shirt. You've got to turn it on at a certain speed. Now, this is just air in here now, right? Man, if you couldn't hear me before, you'll never hear me with this on. How about it? It takes about two pounds of feathers. All right, here we go. How do you know when the thing's full? Uh, in 
instinct. Oh. Mine or yours? Whoever speaks first. <laughs> Are you sure this thing's not full yet? I'm gonna check it. Oh my God. We went crazy, didn't we? You wanna make two? We overstuffed it. <laughs> I felt like, I mean, we took a quarter oh of God. your package. Look at that. That's enough for a queen. A queen, Liberace. Queen size. Oh, that wasn't too bad. No, what is it, 2.09? Yeah, that's too much. Oh, that's a nice pillow. It has pillow. no give to it. Oh, Pillows need to breathe. A little more. So you're sucking it out of this pillow. Right. OK. I can sleep on that. Good. But obviously, we got to do some sewing. And you hold it like this to keep it even. I don't know why it's doing that. I think because you're going 90 miles an hour. I yeah. thought you liked it fast. I thought you were all about speed, speed, speed. Good, good. Whoa, you got to put your tag on. This thing. The contents of pillows are regulated by law and must be listed on the tag. Down and feather pillows like this must contain a minimum amount of down and must not exceed a maximum amount of feathers. Okay. I'm going to buy this for me, though, and I'm just going to take it on okay, and rip it off. Okay, slow up a little bit. The consumer can remove the tag. All the way through? Uh, go for it. You buy it, you can detag it. There. Not yeah. bad. Well, it's generally what I shoot for. Not good, not bad. Not good, not bad. Okay, beers on ice. Hold on, we're not done yet. Hold on. <laughs> Come on, just let me say goodbye to you. Have a nice little wrap-up out of this crazy oh, show. Oh, is that what you do? That's what I try and do. I don't know when I lost control of the day, to tell you the truth. You want a pillow fight? No, we're not going to strip down and have a pillow fight. All right. But I just want to tell you, it was an absolute treat to come out here. Thanks for cutting the heads off geese with me and taking off their feathers and pulling out their guts and then putting their soft down inside these pillows. That was nice. How come you're so nice? Thanks, honey. Can I give you a hug? Yeah. Oh, okay. good. I love hugs. Okay, cool. Thank you. I know, I know, you're sitting at home and you're scratching your head and you're saying, why in this age of enlightenment is it still necessary to blast these beautiful creatures out of the sky? And the answer is simple. Responsible hunting has always been a part of responsible conservation. Plus, they taste really good. And one other thing. If it weren't for Trudy and her arthritic knuckles and her 40 years of tireless service, our nights would be restless. And that is something to sleep on. Over here. That's right. I'm talking to you. Come on. I want to show you something. I'm in the dark. I'm freezing. Hunting spiders. Look, I found one. He's small, but it's a good start. I'm here because you suggested I go hunt for spiders in the cold dark. Somebody went to discovery.com forward slash dirty jobs and said that very thing. So here I am doing your bidding. Now I'm done and I need a new idea. Discovery.com forward slash dirty jobs. Much obliged. Hurry. I'm freezing. It's the perfect food. <laughs> you got it. All right, take that tree. Probably could have thought that one through a little better. <laughs>